This time last year, in fact pretty much to the day this time last year, I filmed my first ever review and it featured this, the £500 Mark V Golf. So to get us going in 2020, I figured why not take another look at this car and see how it's getting on. So then just a quick recap for those of you who didn't watch the video I published last year. Admittedly, it's quite an awkward video and it's amazing quite how it changes in 12 months. But anyway, this is quite obviously a Mark V Golf. This one in particular is in the base S specification. That means it's got pretty much one luxury sort of touch on it and that is air conditioning. I do have to admit I failed to check whether that works or not. But yes, I'll do that at some point in this video. So yes, this is a Mark V Golf and as the title gives away, this cost Adam £500 when he bought it probably a little over a year ago now. Now on top of that, he had to spend another 100 and something pounds on some tires. Even so, for 650 quid, I think this is an absolute bargain. And I have to admit, I did a bit of research this morning and I don't really know what the previous owners were doing getting rid of it for so cheap. Um, looking now, you can't really pick up a decent Mark V for anywhere near 500 quid. Just a quick word from our sponsor for this video, which was this very inquisitive Robin. And he just wanted to let you know that the aircon doesn't actually work and that you should probably subscribe to the channel because, well, it just makes sense. So having said that, over the last 12 months, has this car been bargain motoring bliss or a bit of a maintenance nightmare? Well, it's here, so that's a start. But actually, I'm glad to report this car has been a fantastic workhorse, creating a fairly hard to believe 20,000 miles without major issue. Now, obviously, for a car with 134,000 miles on it, it is starting to look a little bit tired. So there are nicks, there are scratches, and obviously with this being a Mark V Golf, the arches are starting to rust. But as it's a cheap car, those sort of bits of wear are kind of part of the charm. And actually, for it still to be here, after that many miles costing such a little amount of money, I think is testament to this car's build quality. So obviously me saying without a major issue kind of implies that there has been some smaller bits and perhaps unsurprisingly there has been, but I don't think they're deal breakers. So the first thing was that every now and again when you'd indicate the indicator on the opposite side, would start flashing instead of the one you want it to indicate on, if that makes sense. Um, now that was down to it being wet. So the owners used his brain there and realized that the fact one of these housings had cracked meant moisture was getting in and shorting the circuit. So after some reapplied gaffer tape, that issue is now solved. Now the other issue was, or I'm not really sure you could call it an issue, was the central locking went slightly weird. Um, and I think that's been put down to the fact the boot wasn't closed properly. So yeah, not exactly deal breakers. Um, other than that, the car does need its oil and water topping up quite regularly and it has had to have the AA called out to it once for a dead battery. That battery was then replaced as it turned out that was the original battery that this car left the factory with. So yeah, all in all, they're not that catastrophic. Now over the last 12 months, the car's obviously also needed an MOT. I forgot to mention this bit before. And all it needed for that was a new set of front brake pads, an anti-roll bar drop link, I think, or something. I'll put it on screen now if I've got it wrong. But as I'm sure you'll agree, over the last 12 months, it's hardly been catastrophic in terms of failures. And you know, you do expect to spend some money on things like MOTs when you're talking about a car of this age. Yeah, basically this car's been reliable, it's been a good workhorse, it's been economical and it's been comfortable. Um, in the words of the person who owns this, um, this is a quote, he's been surprised by how much he likes it because it's just a cheap piece of, insert word here. And I can see what he's saying, obviously it's a bit of a cheap old knacker, but the joy in something like this is in the cheap old charm. You just jump in it, you do what you want, it doesn't really matter, and as long as it gets you to where you need to be, that's all that matters. And that is the charm of these old cars. They're just, I don't know, there's just something about them and they just seem to keep going, which is another amazing thing. Yeah, um, in my short test drive here, my two takeaways are, it rides surprisingly well. Admittedly, we're on a bit of a crap piece of road now, so don't take the jiggliness as gospel. And the gear change is really small, a uh, really short throw, and it's nice and slick. So yeah, this has been an update on the 500 pound Mark V Golf. Uh, it seems to have plenty of life left in it yet. I've been Blee. Thank you for watching and please remember to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.